There's no suggestion that the same author wrote the songs of ascents which comprise the current group of psalms that we're looking through. We can, though, I think, assume that there would have been at least some reflection upon other people's ideas. The author of Psalm 130 will know that the righteousness of living according to the covenant commands of God leads to blessing for both family and nation, and that these two are intertwined. He also knows that the wicked shall have no part in the blessing of the people. Our last two psalms have reflected upon these ideas. But this is a problem for him, for he knows that he too has gone astray. Psalm 130 is a personal lament over many personal failings, and they are indeed many and deep. The psalmist knows that were God to keep a record of all our sins, then there would be no escape from the depths for him. He must therefore seek the forgiveness and acceptance of the Lord in spite of his past wrongdoing. He knows it is only the mercy and forgiveness of God that he can rely upon, not in any goodness of his own. In a way, he prefigures the Apostle Paul's doctrine of justification or righteousness by faith, that is, that we are made right with God by having complete trust in what God has done for us in Christ Jesus. It is not by our works, that is, by our own efforts, that we are made right with God, but by what God has done for us. Rather, any good works of our own are a response of thanksgiving and trust in God for what he continues to do through the covenant, that he will be our God and we his people. The psalmist sees that being forgiven means that we can serve God with reverence, and so his hope is in God alone. And he will look to God's word and watch for grace as he waits for the wounds of his own sin to be healed. It's no wonder that the German reformer Martin Luther categorised this as one of what he called the Pauline Psalms because of its own uh, emphasis on forgiveness of sin through God's grace. Psalm 130, a song of ascents. Out of the depths I cry to you, Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, Lord, kept a record of sins, Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, so that we can, with reverence, serve you. I wait for the Lord. My whole being waits, and in his word I put my hope. I wait for the Lord more than watchmen wait for the morning, more than watchmen wait for the morning. Israel, put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. Truly then there can be no pride before God. All of the great things, the power wielded, the status enjoyed, the wealth consumed, all of this pales to nothing compared to the joy and the sense of assurance found in acceptance by God. And so Psalm 131, a song of ascents of David. My heart is not proud, Lord, my eyes are not haughty. I do not concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful for me. But I have calmed and quietened myself. I am like a weaned child with its mother. Like a weaned child I am content. Israel, put your hope in the Lord, both now and for evermore. Here we see both Psalms 130 and 131 ending with a call for Israel to put its hope in the Lord, for in the Lord this hope is secure. A prayer. Lord, we put our hope in you, for you alone are the source and ground of our righteousness. We are lost without you. With you we are received into a family of faith, a community of forgiveness and belonging. Fill our hearts with love for each other, and reverence for you 
as we wait for the healing that we may serve with thankfulness as your kingdom rises like the sun at dawn. 